You know already that I love to use my drone. And sometimes, especially if I don't have with me my loyal Nikon D810, I also use the drone to take some photos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I edit my drone photography in Lightroom. Well, welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I share some uh, drone photography and Lightroom editing tips. So if you're here for the first time and you love photography like me, it might be a good idea to subscribe. Do you see this uh, cheesy sunset photo? Nothing really special, right? What is special about this photo is that it's taken with a drone. So what is really special is the point of view. At the same time, my drone camera has a very tiny sensor, just 12 megapixels, but, but it can shoot in RAW. And because it can shoot in RAW, we can easily take these images in Lightroom and develop them. And right now, I will show you how. Before going into the Lightroom editing workflow, let me tell you that it has been a while since we had our last Lightroom challenge. So I've been thinking that is about time to have a new one. Let me tell you how this challenge is going to work. I would like you to create one post on Instagram. Your post will show two images. One will be your raw file, the before, and the other one will be your edited image in Lightroom or whatever else program you use. Remember to tag me in your photo, Atelier Rufo Photography, use the hashtag uh, Atelier Photo Club, but you will need to use the hashtag Lightroom Challenge underscore ART. And we are using this hashtag because not only I will feature the best photos in one of my future videos, but also because I will pick the very best one. Of course, that's my opinion. I'm the only judge. And I will send this t-shirt. I mean, not this one, but a new one to the winner. So good luck to everyone. Get out and take some photos this weekend. One more thing. Because I have a new phone, the three cameras, a smartphone, the new iPhone. Would you be interested in seeing a video where I attempt long exposure photography with my iPhone 11 Pro? Maybe I could compare a long exposure taken with my iPhone to a long exposure taken with my Nikon D810. What do you think? If you think this is a good idea, if you would like to see a video like that, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, now we can go into Lightroom. And here we are in Lightroom. I know this uh, is not a spectacular photo, but in my opinion is a good example of what you can achieve when you shoot in RAW, even if you're using a smaller sensor and a camera without a crazy uh, resolution. As a matter of fact, if I press the I key, I can see the photo information and uh, clearly from the 4.73 millimeter lens and the name of the file, you will be able to understand that this photo was taken with my DJI Mavic Pro drone. This is the result, but this is actually the starting point. So let's see how we can improve this very flat image with a very simple Lightroom editing workflow. I will try to do very simple things, but in a very time efficient way in order to show you that you don't need a lot of time to improve a photo like this. First of all, as with any photo, I like to evaluate which is the best aspect ratio for an image like this. And in my opinion, in this case, there is a lot of sky and a lot of water. And um, 
I think it would be better to use the rule of third technique in order to make this composition a little more interesting. So I will select the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And as I said, I like to apply the rule of third technique, having my horizon right at two thirds of this frame. I will also make sure that my horizon is straight and now it is done. Let me open the basic panel. In the basic panel, because we shot in row, we can change the white balance. And for this image, I will pick a daylight, keeping the temperature kind of cool, 5,500. Then I will reduce the highlights. I will uh, add a little bit of shadows. I will press and hold the shift key, double click on whites and double click on blacks. I will add a little bit of vibrance and just a tiny bit of saturation. You can see how with a few clicks we already change our image quite a bit before and after. Now let me go into the tone curve. I will add a medium contrast. And now before moving forward, I actually need to open the lens correction panel because I forgot to click on the remove chromatic aberration and enable the profile corrections. These are usually things that I prefer to do at the very beginning of my editing workflow, I just forgot. Now I will open the split toning panel and add a little bit of uh, orange to my highlights. As far as concerns the shadows instead, I want to have a little bit of a bluish tone. I can see the before and after, subtle change, subtle difference, but in the end, they will add up. Let's open the detail panel. In the detail, I will reduce the radius of the sharpening. I will instead increase the detail. I will hold the Alt key and move my masking slider to the right with the masking slider, I can decide where the sharpening will be applied. The sharpening will only happen to whatever is white in this image. Now that I made my selection, I can decide how much sharpening I want to apply. The very last general adjustment that I will apply will be a little bit of a post crop vignetting that I will apply and that's it now quickly let me do a few local adjustments i will add a graduated filter from the top i will hold the shift button drag it down maybe here double click on effects to reset all the adjustments and here I will reduce the highlights a little bit. I will add a little bit of contrast and I will reduce the noise because I think there is some. I might also add a tad of dehaze and a tad of saturation. I will click on new because I want to apply another graduated filter this time from the bottom, I will place it right here. Double click on effect to reset my adjustments again. And for the bottom part of this image, I like to add a little bit of shadows. And then I will decrease the clarity. I will decrease the dehaze. I will add a little bit of saturation and I want to say 
that I am done. This is it. This is the before. This is the after. Again, not a masterpiece, but you can see how much we can do in Lightroom if we should enroll, even if we use a camera with a very tiny sensor. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that this video will convince you to use the RAW format when you take your photos, if you don't do this yet. As you just saw, if you shoot in RAW with a very basic Lightroom editing workflow, you can dramatically change the look of your photos. So trust me on this one. It's worth it. Before clicking out of this video, don't forget to leave me a like and a comment. And maybe, maybe you could even check the photo collection. Unless you feel you're going to win the Lightroom challenge. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.